Hey there guys, Master64 here, and today I am going to be showing you uh, how to place static meshes in your level, how to place down sound, and also how to make ambience. It's not too terribly hard. So you come up here, for static meshes at least, you click here, and as you see we have a bunch of meshes here. You can click on this right here and open up any package that you currently have. But in this example, I'm going to be using these two static meshes right here that are in uh, one Shrek Swamp SM. Now we want to minimize this. And we simply figure out where we're going to want to place this in the level. I want to place it right here in this corner. So we right click. As you can see, it pulls up Add Static Mesh. You click this. And as you can see, it was now added. Now, you want to check if it is properly flush with the floor, because more than likely, um, you will want to check for that. And some of these static meshes will not place down properly. Looking at this, though, it looks completely fine. I don't actually like where that went, though, so I'm going to move that over just a little bit. All right, now let's place down the other stump. Simply right click again, and boom. I'm gonna rotate this because if you don't rotate these, it's gonna look really repetitive. You'll notice that it doesn't look correct, so we need to do a build on the map. Now, as you can see, it looks a lot more correct. Now, one thing to note is that these right here, they are just simply static meshes. These cannot be moved in any case. These are always here. You can't toggle on and off their view or anything. You will always see these no matter what. Another thing to note is that you can slime on these. So we're going to do that really quick. Highlight both of these with control clicking. Right click. Click on Static Mesh Actor Properties. As you can see, it says I have two selected. Now bring this up right here. Go to Advanced. And as you can see, there is a Boolean here that says B is mountable. You're going to want to tick that to true. All right, so what that did is it made it to where these can now be mounted if a player is rubbing up against this and is looking at it. Now let's say, for instance, that like you created a block, right? Like you, okay, like you do this, uh, you take the block, uh, let's just move it over here. I don't know why I'm on a grid of eight. Click add, uh, and we want to apply texture to all this, so we click this. Shift B, as I've shown you before, go to your textures. We're gonna go to end use, since this is a texture we're already using. You can also see it tells you how many surfaces uh, it's, it's currently showing on. Click there, and then align it to box. Now we want to build again. Now what we want to do, well actually I, I, I toggled off the view of the box and I'm going to do that. Now from this point, if we want to have it to where we can mount this right here, because keep in mind this is BSP, uh, you cannot just simply set a property to it. As you can see if I do this, well see you could set surface properties, but surface properties, as you can tell, are not the same as actor properties. So we're going to want to make this box slightly bigger. We don't need to make it much bigger, let's just, uh, let's do that. I guess we'll do that boom all right so now that's like barely poking out it just needs to be outside a little bit so then we are going to come over here right click on this all right now here's all of the volumes in the entire game the one you're going to want to worry about is mount volume click on that now press b to make sure to actually put it in as you can see it is now in and that's all there is to it so if we were to go in the game we would mount this and we would also mount these now let's add some sound slash ambience. This is not too hard to do. You just need to go into uh, the actor browser as I've shown that one time. All right, so for a direct ambient sound coming from a, from a certain point, what you're going to want to do is go over to key point. And as you can see, there is a thing called ambient sound. So click on that. Now right click and place in the level. As you can see, it's now in the level. Right now, click on this, we go down to sound. You can see that no sound is selected for ambient sound. So we're going to want to go over to our sound browser. Now I'm going to use the alarm from FGM Laboratory. Click that, now go over here, and then click use. And as you can see, you put it all in, we're all good. You really don't need to adjust any of these other settings for the most part, so more than likely we are now fine. Now let's add in something like birds or something like that. See, when you want like something like birds, you don't want to just simply put down like a source for the birds because that just won't work. It'll just loop the audio. It'll be the same bird sound in the same place consistently every time, and you don't want that. You want it to be completely random. So come over here to the actor browser yet again. We're going to go over to triggers and then trigger. And at the top, there is something called an ambient sound trigger. Okay. We're going to want to place this in our level. As you can see, we have this. All right, so we're going to want to make this much bigger. So let's toggle on radii view for the top so we can see the radius relative to the top of the map. We're going to want to make this probably 
500 and then set this to like 500 as well. Okay, well, what about 750? Yes, yeah, 750. Actually, that's like a perfect place to put it. All right. And now we want to give it some sound. As you can see, it allows up to a range of eight random sounds to play, which isn't too much, but it's good enough. So come back over to the sounds and then select a bird sound. We're going to use... Uh, it doesn't really matter which one of these we use. We're just going to use them. So we do this, click, then click use, and then click use. And we're just going to fill all these up because they actually provide more bird sounds than the trigger itself even allows for. All right, so now we have all these. You can mess around with all these if you want, like how much you want to randomize the pitch, which would probably be between like 0.9 and 1.1 if you wanted to be really fancy. You could do the random distance from the camera, the direction volume and that this is all like completely randomized although if i remember correctly the volume doesn't seem to work because it, as you can see it's set to this weird value i'm not sure why but the main two things you use is snd and this boolean up here b one sound in a row essentially if this is set to true it has the ability to pick this and then instead of picking another one of these, it picks. It, it has a chance of picking the exact same one that just occurred. Which obviously, you probably don't want in most cases. But in some cases, you would. In my case, I'll leave it to false, and that'll be it. Alright, so what the heck did we just set up? Well, when Shrek walks over here, what's going to happen? He's going to start hearing noises in any of these directions around him. It doesn't matter where, any of the directions. The moment he leaves, he'll stop hearing him. Now, I'm also going to show off uh, where some common items are that people might not know. This is just the very basics of it. You'll learn this the more you use the editor. But let's say you want a coin. This is all in pickup, KW pickup, SH pickup. You have all the posters in the entire game. They'll all be displayed, unfortunately, like this. And as most of us know, this is the first poster. I don't know why they use the exact same model for every single one of these, but just... If you want to know what it is, simply right-click on it, and you'll see it, it'll, it'll tell you what poster it is. But for coins, go here, and boom. Here is every single pickup in the entire game. You have the box of energy bars and the energy keg. Don't get these confused. These are the exact same thing, just with different names. This is just the coin. So let's place down a coin right here. You can place them down. You could right-click on a static mesh and just place it, just like that. Which is very nice. I'm going to move this a little bit so you guys can see. I'll put another coin here. Maybe one here. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Just place freaking coins everywhere. Because if you are trying to make a good level and you don't have coins, the, the level is automatically bad. Just automatically. And then we're going to put a coin stack up here. Which is right there. Literally right beside it. You notice how when you spawn these things then they're slightly above the ground. Not much, but they are slightly. There are energy bars. I guess I'll put an energy bar here because, it, I don't know, it kind of looks cool. There's mice, potion, strong, and weak. You could place these in your level, but you have to have a custom bind in order to use these. Same goes for these and this one, but this one doesn't even work, so there's literally no point of ever adding this. Yeah, the shamrock. The shamrock is quite literally just the clover. Oh, I'm dumb. Yeah, these two right here are also the same as these, essentially. But yeah, you also have the money bag. We will put the money bag here. You can right click on a wall and place them. As you can see, it didn't perfectly place it though, so we're going to move that out a little bit. Something interesting to point out is that every single one of these have a KW pickup tab. And you can modify these to your liking. It's really, some of these are really cool. Let me try to explain these really quickly. So ambient FX class is the particle actor that will spawn around the actor. The ambient FX radius is how far it'll render from. Bounce into place. If this is set to true, it'll fall. This causes uh, some FPS and performance issues, though, if you do that. But it, uh, it does help out a lot when you're trying to, like, get stuff, like, flat to the ground. You have check for distance. I believe this is for culling, but I'm not too sure. Destroy after fade out. Just set this to true because otherwise you're sacrificing performance. Bounce sound. You could set a sound for it when it bounces. But this is just not great because you can't just simply make them all have physics. Like, you can't talk when that happens. So that means on level startup, all of them will just fall. So bounce sound is basically pointless. Pick up persistent, keep it untrue. Memory location, don't even bother with that. Rotating, that is for whether or not you want it to rotate in a circle. And no, you can't change the rate at which it does that for 
some reason. Is the bounce into place timeout? This is for how long it can be bouncing until it freezes. Well, that's the simplified version of it. There is a fade out time. I don't know what this does, to be honest. And I don't know what this one does either. The pickup FX class. This is the particle that will spawn when you pick it up. And that's the radius for which it'll render. But of course, you're always going to be right beside it when that happens. So there's no point in changing that. But yeah, that's, that's the general stuff. All right, you also have a pickup tab. All of this down here, though, is completely pointless. None of these will actually change anything. But yeah, that's the basics behind the pickup actor specifically. And just for simplification purposes, anything else that you're trying to look for, be looking in triggers, pawn, and SH prop static have a lot of things that you might recognize. You also have KW pawn and the SH pawn. And if you go to SH props, you have a bunch of these things as well. These aren't actually props. Some of them you like are literally just like giant pumpkin. You got the lasers. Like it's it's weird. You go to SH character, as you might remember from the last tutorial. As you might remember from the last tutorial, this shows off all of the characters, but this also shows off all the enemies as well, if you're ever looking for them. And just to save you some time, if you're looking for the spider, he is in here for some reason. I don't know why, but he is. Let's do one more thing. I'm actually gonna add the spider into the map. I'm gonna put him over here. Now that's cool and all that we added him, but he can't actually move around. Well, he kind of can, but not quite. We need path nodes. We could do this, simply right click, add path node. If you've ever done noting for any map for source engine or something similar, you probably know how to node in here. If you don't, then maybe I'll get into a tutorial later on how to do it. But for the most part, think of the nodes as like a task or whatever. So when the spider starts to see you, if he cannot walk directly towards you, he'll take a node. That would be the most efficient way of him getting to you. And he'll like he'll take that path until eventually he gets to the point where he can just walk directly towards you. That's basically how it works. Now, hopefully, and I don't know 100%, hopefully the spider is just going to notice that there's a node here and he'll follow this if he sees us. On the other hand, he might just retreat. I'm not 100% sure, though. All right, if we click build right now, you'll notice that all the nodes go back down. They fix themselves. We have all this up here. Don't worry about this. This doesn't matter. And as you can see, all the nodes are here. If we go to view and then toggle paths, there's no bind to this, by the way, so you have to go here manually to see it. You can see that it has generated a path, but you'll notice one thing is that they have nodes to these. These are not actual nodes that they can use. This is just a thing that our editor shows and shouldn't show, but it does. So do not worry about these. The only thing you need to worry about is these connecting to these. Like the brown apples connecting to the other brown apples. That's all you need to worry about. Anyway, when you're done looking at that, click that. Because you probably don't want to see that. It's a pretty big eyesore to look at. Anyway, after you're done with that, we are now ready to test. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to load up our map YouTube box. Alright, so we have successfully loaded into the map. Everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Let's try to climb up the block first. As you can see, when we walk up to it, we perfectly climb up. All the pickups have spawned perfectly fine. If we hit the side of the stump, we do in fact grab it, so that's good. Alright, so if we go into this room, we should start hearing birds around us. And as you can tell, you can hear the birds around us, you can hear the alarm going off. Let's see if the spider's working. Oh no, he's not working. Okay, well, in theory, if I set up proper path nodes, it would have worked. I'll try to get the spider working next tutorial. But yeah, anyway guys, see ya!